In this video, I'm going to break my ML55 AMG on an off-roading trip. Oh. Then I'm going to fix it. <coughs> then I'm gonna go on another trip, break it again. Oh, this is not good. And need to fix it in the middle of a forest with very unconventional methods with my buddy OJ. Oh, there it goes. Oh, look out, look out. And then we're gonna continue on off-roading. There is a lot of mechanical work, a lot of awesome carnage. Okay. But first, a build recap. My 2000 ML55 AMG started life with me as a well-used 150-ish thousand mile $3,800 SUV with a few issues. After sorting it out mechanically, my friend OJ and I started the build, but since no one makes off-road parts for an old ML, we had to get creative. I started mods by lifting the body with hockey pucks off of Amazon. OJ cut out custom rear suspension spacers. We cranked the factory torsion bars to the max, used shocks meant for a Ford F-150, slotted the factory control arms to control camber, then the fab team at Fluid Motor Union built a fully custom front bumper with winch, I added a bunch of lights, we bolted on some cool rock rings on the factory AMG wheels and had them powder coated, and of course installed some big 35 inch off-road tires and finished it off with a good old fashioned string alignment. The ML was ready to rock and literally the morning after we finished the build, I drove it six hours away, put it on a boat to bring it to an off-roading island, and beat on it all weekend with just minor issues that OJ and I were able to fix up on the spot. For not having locking diffs and considering it has independent suspension front and rear, the ML did great. Its low gear transfer case and 350 horsepower V8 engine gave it the grunt to power through a lot until a different trip last year. I took it on our annual father-son off-road trip in Indiana, and this happened. After a solid five hours of beating on the ML, it broke, so I had it towed back to legit streetcars. Now, the ML broke in Indiana one year ago, and I did take it apart to diagnose it, so the footage you're about to see with my buddy John from Watch GR Go is from last year. Then we get back into present time, getting it ready for this year's father-son off-road trip. Somehow, time travel seems to work its way into all of my videos ever since I got the DeLorean. Weird. All right guys, so this is what we're looking at. Uh, this is our transfer case and nothing leaks under here. The transmission doesn't leak, the engine doesn't leak. Uh, this thing is in great, great condition. We put a new power steering rack in it. We've done a bunch of suspension stuff, all new parts, alignment, everything. It's, it seems to be working really well. One thing that the ML did do for us is remove its own sway bar. So a lot of guys that go off road, they, they take the sway bar off and I didn't do that and the ML didn't like it. So the bushing decided just to fail on us and now it effectively has no sway bar. And I think I'm just gonna remove it. This thing handles horribly anyway. It's better for articulation if you don't have the sway bar. So we're gonna take that out. But yeah, we did harmonic balancer, the tensioner, the other pulley up there. It's got a newer water pump on it and she's, she's solid. Runs really good. But back to the transfer case. Uh, this is the transfer case, and what we need to do is take off this back cover. So we need to take off the rear drive shaft, possibly this exhaust, but then it's just a bunch of 10 mils all the way around, and this is a cover, and the chain will be behind this with some gears. We're hoping it's just the chain that's been destroyed. Maybe it's not the transfer case that's bad. Oh, that would be terrible news. Yeah. Okay. All right, we got the peanut jar. Let's see. It doesn't look horrible. There's really not that much in one of these. Look, we're at one peanut jar full. That's a common measurement. All right, there is some glitter in here. You guys can see the silver trails kind of running through it. It's a fine, fine glitter. Very fine. So hopefully that means there's no broken off teeth. I think book time on this at the dealer is like four and a half hours. Okay. Okay. She's up. All right. We gotta get two more. We're on the last one. Last one. Last one. So now we're going to know if this drive shaft will go back far enough for us to remove this whole thing. Hopefully it goes Let's up. see. Let's see. Good. Moment. Oh, wow. Oh, you didn't need a hammer or anything that time. Nope. There are about 20 bolts like around this thing. A lot of them are up top. It takes like a half hour to get to all of them. So. These are just the three easy ones. It's not that easy. <laughs> so this guy is RTV'd in place. Luckily, they put tabs oh, here. They, they put there's pry another, tabs. There's another one over wow. here. Mercedes probably tried to fight to take those out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to make it more yeah. difficult. All right, here we go. I'm trying to drop it hard. That's probably pinned too, I guess, huh? Yeah. Wow. I'm sure that thing is stuck. Uh, All right. <laughs> it's like... 
<laughs> we had just given up for like the fourth time in a row and it was just bam. All right, Quick. cool. Pushing the drive shaft out of the way to get the case off. Okay. Not easy going. What was that? Uh, oh. Oh, okay, no. Okay, it's not a chain. Is that the selector? Did the selector break off inside it? I thought it was just the chain. Maybe the gears that the chain goes around. This stinks. We gotta, we gotta keep going. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm letting go. Oh wow, this, this uh, came out this way. I thought it was just gonna be this guy right here, which. This shouldn't be coming off with this. Oh yeah, it should have stayed. But I think the but, selector might have hooked it a little bit there. Well, your gears look good. I mean, the, the yeah, the, the, these are chain these, drive. These are really expensive. These gears right here. That's why I didn't order them. Okay. The chain is like a hundred bucks, and it does have a little guide here. Sure does. All right, hang on. Before we continue, I got to show you guys the amazing, legit street cars, gigantic drying towel. This thing will change your life. And I'm having a big sale right now, twenty percent off. Look at this. See the hood of the CTS. See all that water. One swipe and it's dry. You don't even have to go over this area again. It's completely dry. These things will change your life. It took me about a year to find the right ones. I'm super proud of these. The reviews on legitstreetcars.com are amazing. You can dry your car in just a few minutes. So stop wasting your time with a bunch of little microfibers that you have to wring out 800 times. Look at that, I just dried the hood of the car in like 10 seconds. So I'm having a bunch of good bundle deals on these as well as the legit street cars microfiber. These are about double the size of your normal microfiber and they work great inside and outside on your car. So 20% off the drying towels and the microfibers and lots of good bundle deals going on that you can apply that discount to as well. Take advantage of the deal, it's limited time only. This is the only sponsorship in this video. I'm sponsoring my own video, so click on the link down below get yourself some drying towel action some microfibers and keep your cars clean unlike my ml55 which yeah you'll see it get real dirty thank you guys so much for all of your orders on legitstreetcars.com i'm super proud of the website and your support means the world because hey, it's got a rotary in it that's the problem it's a monster i mean okay this might not be the end of the world like if i just need to do this planetary set right here if everything else is okay so then i don't have to get a whole new transfer case look at this oh there's a there's magnet. a magnet no wonder we didn't see the trash yeah it's all it's all stuck to the magnet oh look there's some damage to the case right there yeah i was not expecting this so now that we're back in the present I have a freshly charged battery. You can see this was the original battery in the ML when we went off-roading last. And I have a used transfer case. I got this for $110 delivered. It's got 137,000 miles on it. Unknown condition, but we're gonna rip it apart and hope that it's in good condition and we'll put a new chain in there. Look at this. But first things first. We need to get the ML in here. I'm gonna get the battery in so we can fire it up for the first time in like, I don't know, a year, something like that. Uh, and we need that power steering to push, trust me. Oh, my ML, I have definitely neglected you. I forgot this tail light broke, I gotta fix that. Here is our M113 engine. This is the naturally aspirated 5.5 liter V8, or 5.4 technically. Uh, 350 horsepower, this thing is a beast, they last forever. We're gonna have no issues restarting this after a year. It's gonna be fine. Might tick a little. The lifters might be angry, but that's okay. This is so funny. So this bottom tray, I don't know if it's rusted out, but the previous owner put a house for sale sign as like a bottom tray. Oh no, it's not even that bad. I don't even know why this is in here. This is hilarious though. <laughs> yeah, it really doesn't do anything, but we're leaving it because someone took the time to cut it out perfectly. All right. Oh, this is a big battery. And very expensive too. I should not have neglected the battery. It's only a year old, but it was dead. I had to put it on the charger. It was only at like eight volts. Ow, go to your home. Go to your for sale sign. These batteries are held in very well from the factory. Look at that. They knew they knew we were gonna off-road it. This thing is held in so nice. Let's connect up our power first, and we'll get the bolt in. We'll tighten up our 13 down here and our 10s for the battery posts. First start time. <laughs> Fired right up. These things are a beast. A little bit of lifter noise. It should go away though after it warms up in a few minutes. That's really not bad for an M113 that's been sitting for a year. She's a monster, she's a monster. Really what we need here is 
this beautiful, beautiful power steering. In order for us to push. Alright. Get this wood out of here. Hey, I left myself almost a full tank. Thanks, Alex. Alright, now we're gonna go neutral. I don't wanna put it in gear at all or it'll make some bad grinding noises. Time to push. Okay. Yeah, this is tough. We're getting it now. We got it in the shop, but I have a battery light coming on, so I just turned the AC and the headlights on. Ah, uh, we're only at 12. That's not good. We should be at like 13.5, 13.8. That's without the engine fan kicking on yet. Uh, I just turned all the loads off. 12.2, yeah, not much better. All right, well, we might have a bad alternator or the voltage regulator. It was fine when I parked it, so it might not be a bad idea to check for potential wiring damage, rodents, something like that. Don't let your car sit outside and rot, guys. It's not good. I'll bake this battery a little bit more, just in case, but yeah, this is probably an alternator issue. The ML55 is on the rack. We'll take a look at the alternator stuff in a moment, but right now I wanna work on the transfer case. So here is our new used transfer case from the junkyard. Uh, there is our old one that is still very much broken. The planetary gear set just decided to die. This chain was good. I actually don't suspect really any issue with the chain on this one either, but we have it out and it'll give us an opportunity to swap out a part that definitely can fail and not that this thing was really leaking, but it's got a little seepage so we can reseal it. Anyway, bunch of tens, let's go. I'm gonna remove the motor first. There we go. And this has some sealant as well. Cut this tag off and here we go. We'll also get to see what kind of fluid is in this. That'll tell us if it's a good one or not. But honestly, one of the most important reasons why we're taking this apart is because before we go through all the labor and putting expensive fluid in it and everything in the ML, we wanna see what the internals are. Is this one bad too? Who knows? I mean, we see it turning, but that doesn't mean everything inside is perfect. Before we get too crazy, let's see. Can we open up this fill plug? Oh yeah, no problem. All right, we'll leave that as is. Okay, I got this thing ready for surgery, propped up with an old AC compressor. We're just literally using the box and a piece of wood. And it's been so long that I filmed the other video that I don't even remember how I did this. When in doubt, get a bigger pry bar. If you guys are having trouble separating one of these, you can take a bolt, put a nut on it, one that fits just right. So we're gonna fit this in here like so. All right until it won't go in anymore, then back it off, and then just turn it by hand until you can't anymore. Now it's nice and tight in there. Okay, if you need to get a washer in here, you can do that. Now this will be the perfect height to pop this up. Okay, so now we're gonna loosen this up, which is going to elongate it, and now it's a bottle jack. It should be able to separate these two. Yep, it's coming, see? And you can start to see some air in there. Now that we have that, we can get a little screwdriver in here, and we can start to pry it. Cool. There we go. And we'll just go evenly all the way around. And we're fully loose. And uh, can I admit something to you guys right now? I've never done this before. <laughs> I just came up with this right now. I'm like, normally the engine holds one side so it's easier to separate, but this worked out really well. We made our own little bottle jack out of just some stuff that was in our junk drawer. So now you know how to separate these without going crazy with a hammer and pry bars and gouging everything. Okay, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna take off this pinion nut. We left it on the other one and this all came apart most likely because everything was broken inside. So we need to remove this. There we go. Okay, that's easy. There we go. Perfect, so now everything is staying in there. This was all shattered, so it all came out as one. Kind of funny. Uh, but here is our chain, and this is for the high-low right here. And they, it looks like they got most of the fluid out of here. All right, so I'm just gonna remove this for now. Now, right now, this chain might seem loose to you, and that is because we have the cover off. So the chain rides on this guide right here, and it offers a little bit of tension to it. So we don't have that on right now. I've definitely seen way worse. This is probably fine. We could have left this, I'm sure, but it's okay. We'll swap it out. Okay, so now we can slide this off here, little collar, and we'll be able to take off both of these gears with the chain. It's kind of a little song and dance here, do each one equally. Okay, yeah, we might just be able to leave this one on and sneak it on. All right, now I'm second guessing taking this thing apart because of the deadline I have to leave in a week on this off-road trip. Check this out. This is our new chain and it is not fitting. And I ordered it for this year transfer case and everything. This doesn't make any sense. These should be all the same. Whereas then if you take the old chain, it goes right on. I am going to try and steal the gears from the ML55 transfer case in hopes that they're good with this new chain. If not, we're gonna have to go back together with the old one, which I think is fine anyway. All right, let's pop this nut off. All right, I'll get all the guts out. Let's just take this off really quick and see. Please work, please work, please work. Oh no, they totally do not work. I got the wrong part. All right, well, 
We gotta roll with the punches here, people. I don't have time to order up a new one. We gotta get this transfer case in there today. All right, let's get ML55 stuff out of here. Oh, wow, yeah, this new chain is all wrong. Not only does it not work at all, but it's longer. I can't have that. This will be flopping around like crazy. Okay, well, that pretty much determines that. We're going back together uh, with the chain that came with this. So anyway, we're gonna get a reseal out of the deal. At least we get to inspect in here and kind of see what's going on. But right off the bat, everything looks really nice. This is what broke on ours and all these planetary gears look to be in good shape. So also it doesn't smell in here and I mean, th this is lifetime fluid, but it looks fine. Yeah, I don't see any metal glitter in there or anything. People don't really change this fluid ever, which they should, but uh, yeah, we're good. Ball bearings in here look good. The screen looks good. We'll clean up the little magnet here. It's normal to have a little bit of smudge on there. Well, hey, at least we got to see the inside, right? Let's just pretend this is a nice new chain. And this is, I mean, they're so easy to replace. This is a shame. Yeah, just throw it on like that, like that. Collar back on. It's new, all right? Look, it, it even seems tighter for some reason right now. Just kidding. <laughs> All right, let's clean up some goo. Get this guy back together. We have two new transfer case seals coming. So in the meantime, let's take this bag off that I use to protect the back. There she is. I have the transmission jack supporting our transmission because we're about to drop this really heavy cross member. So I've already sprayed some penetrating oil on these. Yeah, that did a lot. Let's shorten this up. Let's give it some more direct power. I am going to get dirty. I know the ML kind of looks a little rusted here because of all the off-roading and going through big puddles of water and dirt and everything, but it comes apart pretty easily, actually. I don't know why anyone would say that right before taking off these two nuts. I guess I got a lot of confidence. See, I knew it all along. Okay, now we got these guys here. Like butter. Last one. <laughs> that was part of the off-roading trip. Let's go dump this outside. Go back to nature. There we go. We have to remove this front drive shaft, so I'm removing the bolts here. I'll go ahead and turn this guy around. Right about there. We can only get a wrench in here, and here's a little trick to get more power. Take another wrench, put it on the open end, and you'll get some more leverage. So we can break these loose a little like that. All right. Just takes a little while each time. Tight quarters here, it's hard to get any sockets in there, but no biggie. There we go. These usually get pretty fused on. There we go. Okay, a little shock with a hammer. That'll do it. Okay, so this can just kind of hang out right here. We're good with that. Um, now we did not get a new trans mount with our transfer case, so let's remove that. And this seems to be in pretty good shape, so we'll reuse it. There we go. It's a little dirty, that's all. At this point, everything is off. We just have all of the bolts around the perimeter to remove the entire transfer case, and they kind of stink on this one. These are nice and easy. The rest of them face the other way, all the way on top as well. So that's gonna be fun. Now, I think what's gonna help is if we're able to lower this transmission. So let's remove these exhaust brackets. And I put all new hardware on this last year. Did I go stainless hardware? Oh man, this is like the closest thing to a DeLorean I had at the time. There we go. I got that bracket off too. Now we can lower this guy. That should give us a lot more room. And we'll keep a little bit of tension on there. There we go. All right, let's see if we can break these loose with the little guy. Oh, no problem. And then let me just skip ahead to the worst ones, which are up here. No, this is easy. Yeah, super easy. We can get all the way around. Yeah, I can get my hand all the way around there. Cool. All right, I'm gonna take all of these out and then we'll be able to get this gigantic chunk of part out of the ML. All right, I've gotten all those top ones out. Uh, yeah, it took a while. And let me tell you, this little tiny wrench saved the day. You don't get much leverage and it really hurts your fingers, but that's pretty much the only way to get those top ones. So now we just have these three easy guys on the bottom. And yeah, what's nice is none of these are crusted in there at all. Easy peasy. And they used a ton of blue Loctite on these, that's for sure. All right, we'll do the same. Broke loose pretty easy. We got a little bit of fluid coming out of there. Oh yeah, we just got stuck on a little dowel right there, that's all. Oh, is this thing just gonna fall out on me? It might. When in doubt, bring the pry bar. Move out of my way, little screwdriver. Come on, dowel pins. Let's see, look, it's, it's out. It's, oh, there we go. Yay! This might be my most manliest moment on the channel. I'm just gonna muscle this guy out. No trans jack, no nothing. Oh my gosh. Okay. Don't ever be tough again, Alex. I got it. Yep. Yeah, no problem. It's so easy. Oh. <laughs> okay. 
Ah, I did it, yay. Why would we have fluid leaking out of there? Oh yeah, look at the transfer case seal was leaking just a wee bit. So the transmission and the transfer case don't shear fluid. They're both sealed. They have a seal like this at both ends. Uh, so yeah, it's not supposed to be fluid here. It was just a little mixed with some red dirt or something. I don't know. But anyway, no big deal. Let's get this thing out, out of the way. Go by the space van. There you go. Before we put this thing back together, I want to replace this seal right here. It's definitely seen better days. And we found this at the local auto parts store for nine bucks. The dealer said it would be like four days. So that's kind of nice. We'll just use a little pry bar here to pop this out. This one's pretty deep in there, so it'll take a little while. If you gotta get your foot involved, just do it. All right, one more booting. Yeah, did it. <laughs> All right. Now we got our nice new seal. We'll clean this up first though. Great time to inspect these ball bearings. These look really good. You know what guys, on second thought, I'm going to use the back case of my old transfer case. I like the feel of these bearings much better. Very smooth, I already cleaned them out. And before we get the seal in there, just getting a little transfer, it'll get saturated. So you don't really have to do that. But anyway, I already got the seal out and here's our new seal. And this will only go so far, which is kind of nice. So then we just have a seal installer and just make sure you're hitting it down even the whole way. And right now, I think it needs to go down a little bit further. So we're just gonna swap out for another attachment to our seal installer. Okay, this one should work now. Yep. And we're pretty much there. You just wanna make sure you're bottomed out. Yeah, we're golden. Perfect, bearing's good, new seal. Now we just need to clean up the mating surface on this half. And this is an aluminum case, so you don't wanna to go too crazy and gouge into it. So we're just being really nice and gentle here with the wire wheel. So I've already cleaned this one up. Uh, we're just gonna do one final pass. And we're ready to go back together. So here's our little magnet that we can clean up. Yeah, this really didn't have much on it. So we know this transfer case is going to be okay. These things were actually pretty robust. If you don't put 35s on your ML55 and lift it and then go beat on it for like five hours without any cool down whatsoever. If you don't do that, you're good. But what fun is that? What fun is not doing that, you know? This sits in there like this and then the other case half will seal it. And I've already cleaned around this guy, so we are good. Now we need to put back the actuator arm for the low range. So I have to make sure that this is slotted in properly. And there's a pin down here. So that's gotta go there. And then we need to lift up. Yep, there we go. Okay, cool. So basically when you're activating low gear, your motor is spinning and moving this lever up, which is gonna give us a new gear set, a low range gear set. So you're normally driving around like this, and then when you wanna go off-roading, you click it into low. This rotates all the way up, and now we're in low gear. And then it'll go all the way down like that, and now we're in high gear. That's all set. Let's join these two twins together. They're not twins, the halves, it makes more sense. So this is sealed up with some RTV. So we will add some new stuff, have a freshly sealed transfer case. This half is all cleaned up. This is not my finest RTV job. Just so much of it comes out of there. You gotta be careful, it's under a lot of pressure. But anyway, I've spread it around, we're ready. Now we gotta make sure that we're getting this lined in there. And it's a little difficult to see. Let's see if I can guide this guy in there. There we go. All right, we are together forever. Let's get some bolts. Lots and lots of bolts. Okay, all of them are started by hand. Oh, she ain't never gonna leak. Okay, now I'm gonna go around by hand. Just make sure these are all nice and tight. Once you get all of them in there, they kind of loosen up a little bit on you. That's okay, we'll hand tighten all of these. Clickety, clack, clack, click, 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 click. Okay, next we're gonna reinstall the high-low transfer case motor. Okay, this RTV, all uh, right. You really don't even need RTV on this technically, because there's a seal there, but they had it from the factory, so I'm gonna put a little bit on there, and I'm making a huge mess. That's okay, it ain't no show car, all right? So I had left the transfer case in high, and I remember that I had tried putting the transfer case in high after it broke to see if I could go anywhere with that. So yeah, the motor is still in high. The transfer case is in high, we're all set up there. So let's get our bolts in. I forgot this bracket went like this. And we just tighten up our four bolts. Cleaned up this ceiling surface. So now we can slide this guy back on. And there is this little rubber seal. Not exactly sure what this does because 
the main seal is already installed. That's the new one we put in. This was on both transfer cases. Don't remember this from my Mercedes days. And it kind of just fits down there and it has a groove, so. Seal's installed, next is this washer. Okay, this nut is like four days away for Mercedes and it's in great shape. So we're gonna add some Loctite and it's gonna be totally fine. Perfect. Yep, we had one thread showing before, so we're good. And we'll clip this electrical connector in here nice and factory-like. Okay, now I'm just gonna pick this thing up on my shoulder and toss her on in. Okay. I mean, I could definitely pick it up and move it around, but I'm not gonna be able to toss her on in. Oh, an old man. Ugh. Just kidding. I'm a young man. Not even 40 yet, people. All right, seriously, people, I think I could get it onto the trans jack by myself. I think I could do it. All right, I got a good grip. Oh, yeah. No problem. Feeling good. There we go. Let's go put it in. I'm gonna clean up this flange a little. Because the mating surface is all we care about. Clean this side up too. And let's get a little anti-seize on here as well. That way next time this transfer case blows up, we'll be able to take that off a lot easier. All right, let's get this unit back in. Almost to the promised land. So not only do we have to line up the bolt holes and the dowels and everything, but we have to spline as well. So it's gonna be a little tricky. Oh, we can turn the back end of it and it'll help us a little. The dowel's getting in the way right now. Just gotta give it a little shimmy sham. All right, she's going in, dowel's in. This thing is splined nicely. And now we're gonna use one of these to draw it in. But don't ever draw it in if you don't think you're 100% lined up because you can ruin things. And we don't like to ruin things, except when we go off-roading and blow transfer cases up, but that's fun. And we're gonna draw this in with a tiny little ratcheting wrench too, so we'll be able to really get a good feel of what we're doing here. Oh, this is so good. So good. Okay, I've got four of them in there. That's good enough for now. We're just gonna move the trans jack over, kind of support this up so we're not stressing out the motor mounts too much. Not a big deal with the ML55. These are not hydraulic filled or anything like that. But yeah, there we go. There we go. I gotta do a lot of stuff. And by stuff, I mean I have to put in a lot of bolts that are very difficult to show you guys. You guys know what bolts look like when they're going through stuff. Here, I'll show you one really easy one, okay? See the super easy one on the bottom? And then we're gonna put it in by hand. We're using quarter drive and really small wrenches, but there you have it. There's one of about 12. Oh, and if I had to rate the difficulty of this job, if you have a lift, I would say it's like a seven out of 10, like a 10 out of 10 being like the easiest. Or should I do that the opposite way? I don't know. 10 out of 10 is the easiest. It's not that hard. It's in the world of doing transfer cases and removing transmissions and stuff like that. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Let's tighten some bolts. All the bolts for the transfer case are done. The ones on top too. And now we got to get this front drive shaft back on. So we're going to do a little bit of Loctite just like Mercedes did. I was going to say just like they did in Germany, but the ML was made in Alabama. Mercedes Benz has an Alabama plant. I think the ML was the first vehicle built at that plant. Mercedes guys, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I'm right. And let's get another one in here so it's located. Can we get a swivel in here to help? Not the best, but it works. Okay, well, that helped us with a few threads. Now we'll just do the rest by hand. All right, that's good. Three more to tighten. Front drive shaft is done, and now we have a rear one. I zip tied this up there last year. So I'll cut that and bring it on down. And let's go ahead and lift up our transmission a little. There we go. We have these longer bolts, and they're also going to get a little bit of Loctite. Don't forget the little brace in between. And I'll put these in two at a time. Okay, and I'll tighten them up by hand. Don't want to cross thread anything. Okay, so we got those two. I'm just going to go ahead and put the rest in now, too. Now, I'm going to tighten these up by hand, but with a super long extension, we can speed this up quite a bit. And the key here is the old ball head Allen. We'll put it in position. Go. Now we can go in by hand and tighten all these up. We just saved a little bit of time, that's all. Rear drive shaft bolts are tightened up. Let's get our exhaust bracket back on and then our cross member. And we're almost there. Oh, we need fluid too. Definitely put fluid back in. Onto these crusty, crusty brackets. They're still intact. We're gonna use them. We're gonna use them up. The ML55 is like a, a buffalo. We use every part until it's gone, out of respect for the ML55, like the buffaloes. Exhaust brackets are done. Trans mount time. I know what you guys are thinking. Alex, that thing is really crusty. Doesn't matter, it's solid. The rubber is totally fine. It would be a gigantic waste of money if we replaced this. Cross member time? Gold member? Remember gold member? Austin Powers, how have they not remade that yet again? They remake everything. Typically, remakes get ruined, but 
Why haven't they ruined that yet? They better not ruin Back to the Future, all right? And let me just tell you, as much as I would like a legit Back to the Future 4, I think the time has passed, unfortunately. All right, nuts going back on. We'll tighten these guys up. If I said these guys too much, I think lately that's been my thing, or maybe for the last couple of years. I call everything these guys. All right, these guys are ready to go. Oh, those guys are looking great. Cross members back on. Now we can lower our trans jack, get that out of the way. It's time for fluid, and we have a fill and a drain. This is already loose from last time, and we drained out the nastiness. Let's make sure, yeah, I'm gonna tighten this up before I forget. All right, you guys know we're gonna use the good stuff, the Amsoil Synthetic. I don't remember if I ever changed out the transfer case fluid. I don't believe I did. And now with this, this is gonna hold up to the heat much better. This is severe temp towing terrain. This stuff is amazing. If you guys want 25% off all your Amsoil products, including their amazing synthetic engine oil, I'll leave a link down below. You can sign up as one of my preferred customers and get 25% off for life. You can even get oil for your friends and family and save them 25% too. It's a great deal. All right, these squeeze pouches are really cool. You don't need any kind of fancy pump or anything like that. You literally just point, squeeze. And this takes almost two quarts. There's one. And now on our second one, we'll see a little bit of fluid coming out. That means we're full. This is good to the last drop. Oh, I can see a little. Yeah, I think it's like 1.8. That's good. Yeah, just like a differential. Once you start seeing it come out, you know, you're good. You can cap it off like so. All right, our $100 junkyard transfer case that we resealed is done. Okay, now it's done. Now it's done. Oh, wait a minute, it's not done. We gotta plug it in. Almost forgot to plug it in. Now it's done. ML's coming down. Actually, you know what? Yeah, let's just get these wheels off the ground a little bit. Now, we still have an alternator we gotta mess around with, but let's see if wheels spin. All right, so very crunchy when I would go into gear before. Hey, we're in reverse. Neutral. Drive. It's a good sign. Now, let's see the wheels. Hey, it's back. Are these working? Yeah, we have all-wheel drive, baby. Woo, let's see, do we have reverse all-wheel drive too? <laughs> now there's a sequence for the transfer case. You're supposed to put it in neutral and let's just go ahead and try out our low range. So we hold it. I just heard something. Yep, now we're in low range. And now let's put it in drive again. Oh yeah. We are ready to crawl, people. Now I'll pop it back into neutral and I'll hold down the low range button again. And we hear a little noise, flashes, and we're good. All right, cool. That's super awesome, really excited, but you can see these really dim lights over there. One of them's a battery light. That means the alternator is not doing anything. With the transfer case job done, we have to figure out why we aren't charging. And this alternator has, I don't know, 160,000 miles, whatever this car has. I believe it's the original. And right now I'm gonna take the belt off, like so. Oh yeah. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but the bearing's not good on this. That's not good. I think the bearing on the alternator is bad. It's making a lot of noise. Um, now, if you guys have been watching the channel for you know, five or six years. I did come out with a video on the Mercedes specifically on this type of engine and the voltage regulator at the back of the alternator can go bad and that's like a $25 part. So let's check that. But either way, I think it's time for an alternator at this mileage. It's just, it's making too much type of noise. I haven't done an old ML alternator in a long time. But I think if we get this fender liner out of the way, it can come out this way. Oh yeah, look at the room in here. I think we can do it. Battery is already disconnected. So we're gonna remove this 13 millimeter nut. All right, this is the main power wire going to the back. This is why you definitely need to disconnect the battery. You don't wanna go Unless you need like a really budget welder, then, then you can do it. Okay, everything is disconnected off the back of the alternator. And now we can get to these two gigantic bolts. And hopefully do not break. Oh no, we're good on this bottom one. Oh yeah. We're in good shape. All the dirt has protected it. It's not rusted at all. I'm sure this alternator is gonna be frozen in there though. Okay, bolt number one, get out. There we go. Look at these threads. It's a thing of beauty. All right, here's our top bolt. Oh, come on now. Oh no. Okay, that is making bad, bad feelings. That, that's not good. That feels like it's gonna snap. We're going right for the good stuff here. Be careful when you're using a torch, it is fire. All right, we got this thing pretty hot. Now I'm gonna try tightening it a little. Let's get rid of this too, let's get in my way. Okay, good cracking noises. Okay. No, 
I don't like it. I don't like it. And if this breaks off, it could break off the water pump. Yeah, lots of stuff can break here. No, I don't like it. Okay, more fire. I'm gonna let some penetrating oil sit in here for a little while. Okay, I think my only chance here is to get some serious heat at the back of the bolt where it threads in. It is frozen solid. I'm gonna pull this fender liner out. Okay. Could have been making some noise. There we go. It's fixed. Yep, right there. That's where the threads are. We need to hit it right there with some heat. Oh, this is the ticket right here. All the heat. All the heat in the world. Okay, that thing is super hot now. Okay, it's making noises, but I can't tell if the actual bolt's turning. Oh, it is. Oh yeah. So when you're cranking up something, make sure the actual bolt is turning. You're not just spinning the head of the bolt off. See that? You're getting some turnage. Oh, it feels so bad though. Oh man. Yeah, it's just stopping right there. I got some penetrating oil in there. Oh man, this is bad. I'm just working it. There we go. Okay, hopefully we didn't just strip out all the threads. It's always a possibility. A little heat, penetrating oil, time. It feels all. It's a great sound. It kind of sounds like the whale sound from the DeLorean fuel injection cleaning. I'm pretty sure we're saying something in whale language right now. Get me out! Get me out of here! Oh, I don't think it's stripping. Yay! Oh, this thing's coming out. I think we might be all right. Okay, it's a little toasty. How do we do? Not bad. Threads are good on the bolt. That's nice. We aren't home free yet. We have to not only get this alternator out, but hope that the threads are okay. All right, that's that came out surprisingly easy. I'll just pry the bottom part out. Okay, I just gotta remember not to touch certain parts of this thing or I'll burn my hand off. Oh yeah. That's very easy to do with the fender liner out. Here she is, our bad alternator. It's crusty. Yeah, who knows? This could have been from off-roading, just getting all sorts of stuff in there. I've definitely seen worse, but uh, but yeah, you can just feel it. I'm curious to see the inside of this alternator, so let's take some screws off the back. Right, I'll go around and release some tabs. Oh, there we are. And here is the voltage regulator. Let's take a good look at her. Now what's crazy is this alternator, new, is like $1,300 or something like that. And then I couldn't find any at the auto parts store. They were still like $400, but no one had any. And I did find one on eBay, brand new Bosch. So the $1,300 one you would get at the dealership, I got it for 500 bucks. Yeah, these are actually pretty worn down. It could just need a voltage regulator as far as the charging goes. I mean, again, it's, it's not horrible, but the bearing's starting to go on this and we don't need any issues on the trail so i'm definitely going to replace the entire thing but yeah this is the part that you guys can swap out on many different mercedes i'll leave that video link down below i show everything in detail on how this works but basically this is a wear item so these should be a lot longer and they stop making contact and then you don't get a charge now what i might do is get a voltage regulator try and clean this up as best as possible and then just keep this as kind of a spare ml part because like there's no sense in throwing this out and i don't need to turn it in for the core either because i bought a new alternator so this could be a good spare bullet that's for sure so let's go ahead and put it back together See if I can find a regulator and toss it in the back. Here is our brand new alternator and it's whisper quiet. You can't hear it spinning at all. So I'll get this up to the mic. Nothing. Something. But yeah, 500 bucks. I know it's a lot, but trust me, when you're looking for one of these, this is a phenomenal deal for a brand new Bosch identical to this one. 150 amp alternator. It's a big boy. Okay, I'm going to blow out these threads. And I'll clean up these bolts even though they're in great shape. This guy is definitely threading in, so we are good. We got lucky there. New alternator going in. The cleanest part on the ML by far. Where the alternators get bolted in is a bushing right here. And you have to kind of push this out. So this part goes towards the front of the car in order for the new alternator to go in. I had a really cool tool I've been using like my whole life, but it's at home. I did this. Just watch. So our socket's going to act as a cup. We're going to thread in this random bolt I found with a washer like that. And then we're going to thread in a nut on this side. And then when we tighten this up, it should push the bushing forward. And now we're going to tighten this up. And we are currently drawing the bushing forward. And hard to see on camera, but it's pulling it in right now. And it's probably enough, but we'll just keep going a little bit more. When we tighten the alternator bolt, it'll reset itself. Okay, now we can remove our tool. 
There we go. And there you have it. The bushing right inside of there is now flush instead of sticking out and getting in the way of our alternator ear. So now our alternator, which is right here, should slide right in. We're gonna do the same exact thing to the top bushing. So you guys can probably see this a little bit better from the top. I'm working through the fenders. There we go. I can feel it going through right now. All right, now we'll loosen this thing up. We should be good. Okay. And the alternator slides right in. Perfect. We're gonna do a little bit of anti-seize here on these threads so that this never gets frozen in there ever again. With that, slide in our bolts. Oh, this feels great. I blew out the threads, got some anti-seize on the bolt. Everything's cleaned up, bushings are reset. It's a beautiful thing, it's a beautiful thing. Now, everything on the front of this engine has been replaced. I did the tensioner, the harmonic balancer, the idler pulley, and the power steering pump. Now we have a brand new factory at Bosch alternator, 150 amps. This thing is ready to rock. Crawl. <laughs> but I do think it's a good idea for me to drive this thing home for a few days and we're gonna drive it soon, right after I finish putting these bolts in and plugging it in. And I'm sure there'll be something else. I'm sure something else is broken while I let my ML just rot outside. It's purpose built though, it's just an off-road machine. All right, I'll get the other one and we'll fire it up and hope that that meter goes to about 13.8, 14 I'd, I'd be happy with that. All right, I just got done plugging everything in on the back. Belt is back on, we are looking good. Let's fire this thing up. So far, so good. Lifter tick has fixed itself. Gotta love the M113. The most important part, what are we getting here? 14.4, yes. We are golden. Since we have a working charging system and a working transfer case, we need to go for a spin and find out what else is not working. All right, let's see if we got headlights still. Okay, good. These are factory Xenon headlights, non-projectors though. And then, yeah, there's the big one. And those should be the two little ones. Are we still good? Oh yeah, we're good. These are amazing when you're on a trail at night, they just light everything up. Oh, let's try the winch, we need that. It saved us last time. So this has a remote control. Let's see. Oh yeah. Still works. Some people said the winch was just for show. It wasn't, I would not have been able to get out had it not been for this winch. We hooked it up to some other vehicles and we're good to go. And this winch is so useful in the shop as well. If we have a dead car, we could just use the ML to winch it in and not have to push. Now we got that back. It's been gone for a year. I love my ML. All right, here we go. We at the very least have to get all the rust off of the brand new brakes. They have like 500 miles on them, but they're all rusty. And if you guys have an older Mercedes and you disconnect the battery or replace the battery, you'll have a BAS ESP P light on, bass for slap at a base. BAS brake assist system is a pretty cool system from back in the day. I'm assuming every car has it now, but it senses how fast you're pressing the brake pedal and it knows if you're in an emergency situation. And even though if you're about to hit a car and you slam on the brakes, you think you're pressing that brake pedal down as fast as it can go, a computer can apply the brakes quicker than you can. So it knows you're getting into a wreck, it knows you're slamming on the brakes and it gives you brake power before you fully slammed on the brakes and it knows to start kicking in ABS and stuff like that. So kind of a cool system. And then ESP is electronic stability program traction control. But anyway, we want those gone. All we have to do is go lock to lock. Oh, there we go. It's gone. It just needs a calibration and you're done. So don't go to the dealer and spend a bunch of money on them resetting that light. You can just do it like that. All right, let's drive this guy. Woo. All right, let's see what these brakes do. Yeah, you can hear them kind of cleaning up. Nice shift, 722.6 transmission, five speed, amazing transmission. Chrysler used them as well. They just work, they're very good. And with the windows up, yeah, there's a little road noise from those big tires, but it's not too bad, brakes are working well. And what's cool about the ML55 is it has factory Brembo brakes all the way around. They're painted red from the factory and everything. They're pretty beefy, you know, for an older SUV. This thing's 23 years old. Yeah, she's back, guys. It doesn't ride bad at all with it being lifted with the tires. All right, I'll stop talking for a second. Just a second. I mean, the road noise is, is really not bad at all. And it's a super nice ride. We did the shocks all the way around. We're about to hit a railroad here. There's a lot of junk in the trunk and it's got a really annoying radar detector from like 20 years ago. It keeps on making bird chirping noises. All right, I'm gonna do a few uh, slamming on the brakes here to clean up these pads and we'll see what they look like. That had to have been pretty good. <laughs> it's 
So it's got 350 horsepower. They weren't like fast because they're a big, heavy full frame SUV, but with these huge tires and everything, it's, you know, it's okay. I couldn't imagine this thing with the V6. I mean, that was a dog. But then with these big tires and everything, ugh. All right, let's do lock to lock here. Little tiny rub right there. Yeah, it's not too bad. But it's got good torque. All right, here we go. Brake. Oh, they're getting better. They're getting better. Good brakes. Good brakes. Oh, yeah. No, she's a runner, guys. This thing is awesome. 3,800 bucks I paid. Brakes, I think, are going to clear up just fine. It's not pulling or anything. Steering wheel's off a little bit from the last trip, but I don't care. All right, train tricks. I really got to get that stuff out of the back. Let's see in the rear. Oh, they're cleaning up. More importantly, how are the fronts? Oh, we're going to be fine. This is just after maybe a half mile of driving. These are going to clean up beautifully. Everything's all good under the hood. I love the fact that everything is new. Every single accessory. Uh, I replaced the radiator as well. So that's good. And then all your normal stuff. Uh, I did change the oil last year. The oil has like 300 miles on it. It has been a year, but I used the 25,000 mile Amsoil synthetic. So I'm not changing it again. It's practically brand new. I'm definitely going to use this for at least the next few months or the next few days if this thing breaks down and then I leave it rot in my back lot for another year. I'm using the oil. Transfer case is looking good, all sealed up, no leaks. The engine and transmission are bone dry as well. This thing is ready to rock. I wanna rock! Dun, 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 dun. I wanna rock! Dun, 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 dun. I want to rock! 80s hair metal, anyone? Okay, last thing we wanna check on this test drive is for low, so we'll go into neutral. I know this worked in the shop before, but I just wanna feel it. Okay, it says we're in low range. Always does that the first time, but yeah, we're gonna be in low range. Oh yeah. Woo! She's torquey. <laughs> I have a bunch of door lock actuators bad too, so it makes that little sound. All right, so four low is supposed to be for off-road purposes only. So let's get a good feel for it. Pretty much no right away. It's just gonna feel very torquey off the line. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it is definitely in four low. This thing is gonna rip again. Until it doesn't. I'm just kidding, it's gonna last forever. All right, so neutral. Hold this guy, you hear a little noise. Now we're in high. Cool. All right, guys, so I've been driving the ML55 for two days. I've put like 120 miles on it. It's absolutely perfect. Nothing to report, no issues whatsoever. But because I own a trailer now and a tow van, I am going to trailer the ML to the off-road park. But guess what just happened? This serpentine belt just flew off out of nowhere. Obviously it's back on now, so the belt didn't get shredded, but take a look at this pulley. It's got a chunk missing out of it. So that seems to be the issue. It must have just flown right off. And I don't remember if we replaced this or not. I don't know. We might've done an aftermarket, something like that. I, I honestly don't remember if we replaced that one, uh, but we're going to replace it right now with one from the dealership. I'm just going to go factory GM and call it a day. And, uh, we should be good. All right, we got our new tensioner in, AC Delco, made in Canada. Thank you, Canadians, for this bell tensioner. I think it's gonna work out pretty well. Luckily, the van is very easy to work on. There's a ton of room. We could stick multiple blowers on this thing if we really wanted to. Look at that. So this is how we're going to loosen up our tension on the belt. Eh, this tensioner doesn't feel too bad. There we go. And then who better to help you fix your Procharge van than the guys from Procharger. <laughs> they came in to help me put a new Procharger on the Corvette. See, look at that new supercharger. Look at this pulley. It's horrible. Tensioner coming off. Oh, these bolts really were not that tight. All right. Looks fine. It seemed a little wobbly coming out there. I don't know. It's a plastic pulley and over time they can crack. And this is just a normal failure. And I've seen this on lots of other cars as well. And crazy coincidence on last year's off-roading trip with the ML, I had a similar pulley. It was a plastic pulley and it broke just like this one, actually kind of a little worse. Uh, while we were driving the ML, we just passed downtown Chicago, belt flew off and then the pulley was bad. So now the ML is fine, but the, the tow rig is not. What are the chances of that? Seriously. New belt tension up, going in. Two bolts, so easy. Love the LS. I know I say this a lot guys but the ls it's, it's the best it's the best overall it's the best engine we'll give it some good old alex torque wrench click and click two clicks so you know it's tight there we go Ooh, don't want to scratch it all right eric coming in for the assist here we're going over the alternator now Got it. You got it? Yep. Eric, do you remember what line the tensioner has to be on? Is that good? Yeah, you're totally fine. Okay. It was in the Procharger instructions. You can set the tension on the belt, but Eric said we're fine. So we're fine. We're done. Let's fire it up. Make sure everything is good. I love it. 
it's blowers making blowery noises. Tensioner's not bouncing around or anything. Belt seems straight. We did replace the belt, obviously, when we did the Pro Charger, and it had no damage at all from it flying off. So we're solid. Van is good to go. All right, guys, it's about 5.30 in the evening. I leave tomorrow at 9 a.m with the van towing the ml on that trailer none of which is done yet because this van keeps on throwing a belt so i thought we fixed it with the new belt tensioner we did not if you give it a lot of load it throws it off so i could just not beat on it but i can't trust this because we're towing so there's going to be load i've eliminated the supercharger from the equation so that's not connected at all so it's running the factory accessory drive right now there's no supercharger stuff involved here at all and it continues to throw the belt every time you go wide open throttle right away it throws the belt what i did was i drew a little line there that black sharpie line and i got it to throw the belt and that line moved but then i I put the belt back on and it and it moved back so it seems like the ring on the balancer is moving it's not spinning all the way around but it's just kind of spinning a little it's a 205,000 mile balancer with rubber in there so i'm going to replace that and, and hope we fix it so here is the new balancer they have these at the auto parts stores because these do fail so this is rubber in here and what can happen is this ring can split from the rubber and it'll start to twist and move and spin let's get this crank bolt off Thing is a beast. I can't believe it did it. This is a 3 8 drive. Hot, 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 hot. A couple hours later, I'm um, done for the night, guys. The van is not going to happen. I couldn't get the harmonic balancer off. Um, I thought I had the right tools to do it. I didn't. I ran to the store, came back. Not the right tools. It's just too late. It's just too late at this point. So right now, I am going to hook up the trailer to my ML, and I'm going to get the ML and the trailer back to my house and figure it out from there. Take the Escalade, see if a friend will let me use his truck, something like that. But there's just too many unknowns. I don't even know if the balancer is going to fix it. So I still got to load and do all sorts of things when we leave in the morning. So I can't trust this van with me and my nine-year-old. Just completely untested with this whole belt situation. I'm not even there with the balancer. So we're done. Okay, we got the ML55 hooked on to the trailer with the Cobra. This thing is squatting down pretty good, but that's okay. Now we're going to push the Cobra back into its normal resting spot. Yes, I will fix this one day. And then we can trailer the trailer back home. We made it. We made it to the off-road park. Big thanks to my buddy Jeff and his brand new trail boss, Silverado, towing the ML, coming in for the save because of, you know, the whole van debacle. But two and a half hours away, ML is here. I'm just kind of taking the straps off. We're gonna hit the trails, see if we can break this thing again. I forgot to reset the maintenance indicator. We have a check engine light on. That's rear O2 sensors. They've been bad for quite some time now. Badlands, here we come. All right, here's our crew. We got two rented UTVs. OJ, my son and his son are behind us somewhere in another one. And then right over there, we have a Jeep Wrangler. And then OJ brought a Rubicon as well, which we don't have on us at the moment. Here we go. This is a dangerous sport. It's definitely dangerous to transfer cases on MLs. All right, they stopped me before I got in because I didn't have a flag. So I just went and bought that. And now let's do a little neutral and some low, low range. There we go. There's OJ. What up? <laughs> All right, we're almost there. So excited. It's daylight. We got plenty of time to break something before it gets dark. That's my main concern here. With the trailer, I'm okay with it. Let's be cool carnage. So here's what I love about the ML. I don't care if I hit stuff like that. In fact, I, I kind of hope we leave here with some, you know, some scrapes, some bruises. Kind of gives the ML character, you know? Looking at. I don't know. Okay, got it? Try it. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't know, I don't know if I'd make that. This is thick. I got a little nervous, yeah. We plowed through, we needed that AMG power. <laughs> oh, that's what I'm talking about. She's thick. Look at this, pure mud. Oh, you guys wanna see something? I did a little skid plate for the alternator. Right there. See that, it's an electric car license plate. Did a custom bend on it, right below the alternator. And then it's screwed into the frame, right there. Look at this thing. I should get it wrapped like this. This is perfect. If only it would just dry and stay this way. All right, here it is. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is where I broke it last time. I'm, I'm almost positive this is the one. Or actually, no. Was it that one? Might have been that one. Here we go again. Here we go. I shouldn't do this. Here we go. Yeah, I think this was it. This, this looks all too familiar. Yep. 
Yeah, see? It's no problem. It's just I was going like full throttle, going crazy for like four hours before this, too. Yeah. Whoa. Okay, okay, okay. Ah, my tires are rubbing. <laughs> it didn't break. <laughs> oh, it was way more gentle on at that time. <laughs> Redemption! Here we go. Here we go. Oh, yeah. We got big ones. Woo. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> this is too much fun, guys. Oh, jeez. You got to go off-roading. This is so cool. Oh, yeah. We got the tunnels. Hang on, we're going neutral. Now, you know, I always forget, this is an AMG vehicle right now. So after these guys are done, I'm revving it in this tube slash tunnel. This is be a AMG truck. Oh, that is a steep, steep, okay, yeah. Let's see, what does this sound like? It's stock, it's very, could sound good. All right, here we go, here we go. Roller coaster. There we go. Bam! <laughs> All right, that was easy. I had fun. This thing rides a little rough. I'm not gonna lie. Just kidding. I don't know why it rides rough. It can't be the terrain at all. Uh, uh, I went through some tight squeezes that I didn't film. I may have gotten some new scratches. Oh, and this door is open. Oh yeah, you can really tell with the dirt in here. Although, eh, this will probably buff out. Not too bad. She looks good though. She looks real good. All right, I'm letting her cool down for a little bit and we're definitely rubbing on something. These aren't all the factory grooves here and that's not normal. But uh, yeah, I gotta do some clearancing. I don't know if it's hitting the fender. Might be hitting right here. That looks about right. Yeah, we might just have to chop that off. And we got a nice battle wound right here. That is sweet. All right, it's day two. Oh, we're getting scratchy. I'm down a very narrow trail right now. And this is one of the big reasons why I like the ML. It's not that wide. Oh man, come on. Uh, okay, we made it, okay. Can you really see where I'm going? Trees everywhere. Ah, ah. Oh, so many scratchy noises. Um, okay. Are we clear of most of that? Oh my gosh. Okay, now we are teeter tottering here. Whoa! Oh, we were on two wheels. Okay, here we go. Let's make it down this thing. Oh, can we get out? Woo! Okay, how are we doing here? Everything's good. Okay, this is too much fun, guys. Too much! Too much? It's too much fun! You're nuts! <laughs> There's a lot of this trip I haven't filmed. It is a father-son trip, so we got all the kids and stuff like that. But man, this is awesome. The UTV guys are going up this. I'm going to wait till they make it all the way up. All right. Go ML. Woo. Woo I made it. Oh, didn't realize this was right in front of me. Okay. Didn't really make it yet. Oh. No, like you're still all four. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, feels like that's up. All right. No, you're good. <laughs> hey, open dips, independent suspension all the way around. It's not bad. She does well. Where she lives in the mud looks so good we got a lot of good new scratches too look at this yeah 
Looking good. Jeff's the real champ. Manual transmission, just going at it. Drove it all the way out here. This thing rocks. It's literally rocking. There we go. Nice. How's that front bumper? You're clear. You're gonna hit that corner of it? Just push it, yeah, there you go. Damn! Oh, oh no, I'm not sure yet. I was smiling too early. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, no problem. <laughs> Hold on, I got, I got to complete it. I think you can get it. Uh, we just made it coming from that way, and now we're gonna hit this again. Oh, she's deep. She's deep. Look at that. Door panel and wall. All right, here we go. I don't want to sink in the mud. Whoa! Oh! It glides over. <laughs> That looks lower. Could be the way it's sitting. Ah, oh, this is so beautiful. I'm hearing a squeaky noise. I don't know if it's coming from me or one of the other rigs. Higher chance it's coming from the ML. It's the oldest, most modified kind of beat on. Oh, it could be the UTV. Maybe. Something's broken, guys. Something is broken with this wheel right here. Yeah, something is really loose. It's knocking around. I don't know what it is. Oh, this is not good. Oh no, something, something is very broken. Oh geez, but I'm on the trail. I gotta get out. I just gotta try and take it easy. Oh yeah, this wheel is like just banging around, hitting everything now. Something is seriously loose right here. Oh yeah, that is not good. Okay, well that axle is totally messed up. Look at that boot. That's not good. So we got that, oh, oh, I see. The upper ball joint, it totally is out of the spindle. All right, yeah, go there. Whoa. That is the spindle. That down there is the upper ball joint. It's supposed to go through there, and that is completely out. And the axle boot ripped, okay. Wow, that's not good. All right, well, mission accomplished. We definitely broke it. Now we just gotta get it back. So I have all my tools with me, but I brought the floor jack on the trip. I had it in the back of the ML off-roading yesterday, and then this morning I'm like, I don't need this. I'll leave it at the house because it's bouncing up and down. And now I really need it. Oh, Jay and I are trying to fix something here. So we got the bottle jack out of the Jeep and a log on the frame. Luckily we found a flat spot to stop. So the ground's not really an issue. We just need to get a little bit of clearance here. We're higher than the factory jack, we tried that. We definitely need to get this wheel off. And here's our new setup. The log was just cracking and getting destroyed. I brought part of my old transfer case with. I'll admit to take a good thumbnail picture with it broken and uh, we're gonna use it <laughs> as a jack. And luckily I still have all of my tools, so. I'm glad I brought that transfer case. Yeah, I definitely came prepared with tools. We got the half inch gun. And because I don't want to scratch the rims, I have the special wheel socket with the plastic coating. So we would not want to scratch those. <laughs> oh, if you guys are ever wondering if a transfer case can hold up the weight of a lifted ML, this is the video for you. We are almost off. Okay. We're almost there. Wheels off. Oh, there it goes. Oh, look out, look out. Ah, here we go. Okay, is the wheel almost out? The wheel's like off the hub for sure. But is it out? No, it's stuck. It's stuck in. It's resting on the rotor right now. Okay. No, it's out. A little more. There we okay. go. Look at this. The nut is gone. I'm gonna borrow a nut from the strut here and see if that's the same thread as that upper ball joint. Is it the same? I'm so lucky these threads aren't destroyed. They look really nice. I think this is gonna be the right thread. It's just a little dirty. That's all. Yeah, this is good. 
Okay, cool. So we have a nut. As long as we can get this upper control arm in the spindle, we'll get that nut on. The shock will only have force going up, so that's fine. That's fine unless you want to jump it. Yeah, exactly. Hey, maybe now I'll have an ABS light on, which will kick ESP and ABS off completely, which would be nice. Okay, okay. Right now it's under the ball joint. All right, so just keep that oh, aimed. Okay. I'm going to start right. heading down, yep, okay? Yep, yep. Getting close. Oh, yeah. We're good. We're good. All right, we got the nut going on right now. There we go. Woo! This nut is threaded. Now, of course, I don't have my ratcheting wrenches. Of course. Mm -hmm. Crescent wrench. A Mustang crescent wrench. I've never seen that before. Saving the day here. Getting very small turns in, but we're getting it tight. Going down, people. We got the nut on. We got to do this in stages right now because it fell to the ground. So we have our log. That's about as much as we can get. So now we got to let it down on the log and then get the transfer case back in there. We found a nice log, I got to say. <laughs> All right, we got this holding up little leaning tower of Pisa going on here, but we'll be all right. T case is back in. Bottle jack. This could be it. We just needed to go up high enough for the wheel. OJ's an absolute monster. Man in this jack the whole time. You got your workout in no matter what. I, I had to get it in some way, right? <laughs> so thank God you broke down. It. Yeah, right. Uh, the T case though, it really worked out. I'm seriously considering leaving that in the back. I mean, it, it was a perfect height. Like we need that. That or like just bring the normal jack that we already brought all the way out. Here. All right, we are off. All right, it's back together. Let's uh, see if we make it. All right, here we go. Back in the road. Feels a million times better already. That's fine. it feels perfect right now, honestly. I mean, we have that nut back on. Yeah, the axle's in bad shape. We're missing the shock nut, but realistically, we could continue on right now. We would just definitely ruin that axle because of the boot. So, we'll get it back to home base. Hopefully, onward and onward, or whatever that saying is. Oh, no, I can't do that. Oh, wait, hold on. I can go around it, okay. Oh. Okay, yeah, definitely. I do not want to mess with any of that. This is nice and flat. I just hope I don't see any red arrows and no way to get around them. Those are the worst ones. All right, well, this is what I'm dealing with, guys. There's there's nowhere easy to go, like at all. We gotta go this way. There we go. Oh, shoot. Hold on. Oh, no. Oh my gosh, we made it. Oh, that was crazy. All right, we're uh, going down the river here. None of us really know how to get out of here. That's the problem. And uh, we were definitely cutting. Oh no, it's a huge log. Jeez. Uh, come on. Okay. We can't find our way out. And we're definitely running into a bunch of red and yellow trails or orange or whatever the medium ones are. Uh, the ML's fine though, honestly, it's back. Had that nut not come off, we would have been good. The axle boot just got ripped because of the angle that it was at because the upper control arm came off. So like right now, this thing is just back to normal. It's totally fine. You know, obviously I don't want to push it with the axle, but you know, we got to make it back. All right, we got a river here. Gonna go fast. Okay, I cannot see. Okay, can't see. Whew. How do we find the hardest part of the trail when I need to limp this thing back? Jeez. Oh, I got a green arrow. Yay. A little hill climb, no biggie. Okay, a little puddle. Oh, you got to be kidding me. I will never make it up there. All uh, right, we finally got out. We made it. The ML's good. I think that axle's starting to get a bunch of dust and sand in it, though. It's starting to make some noises. So, yeah, we're going to be down an axle, that's for sure. But, uh, but she's good. She's good. It was a nut that fell off the upper control arm. I replaced that new. We lock tighted it. Everything was tight. I, I don't know what happened unless, I don't know, it broke off or something. Let me know if you guys have ever seen that, but uh, hey, I'll take that. I'll take that over a broken transfer case and we got to fix it with half of a transfer case and logs and stuff. That's what it's all about, people. All right, so I made it back to the house. So here's what we got going on underneath. The uh, shock reservoir fell down. This clamp needs to be tightened back up. Our axle boot's not in the best shape, but the nut is still good. It's fine. I, I don't know. I think the other one just it broke somehow because it's not like it got loose. I would have felt it. I'm not sure what happened there, but that's our borrowed nut and it's still on there. All right, that is fixed up. Shock is back on. 
yeah. We're good. We just got done taking our annual picture in front of the Badlands sign. So we are at the Badlands in Attica, Indiana. And uh, these are all the rigs. We had a bunch of four wheelers out here, dirt bikes, the Green Ray go-kart that you guys might have seen that I built with my son and my daughter. Uh, the ML, of course, is back in action. At this point, it really just needs an axle, possibly just a boot. Uh, and then OJ did bring a Rubicon that he built. We just we haven't really hit it yet, but we, we might. Haven't hit it yet, maybe we'll do that this evening. Yeah, so at this point, I'm gonna load the ML55 up on the trailer. We're gonna tow it back with my buddy Silverado. Hopefully, I'll be able to fix the ML and the van in one video and get both of those back together because I do wanna come out here again or to another off-road park. So if you guys know of any cool ones in the Midwest, kind of, a, you know, two, three hours away from Chicago, something like that, let me know because I wanna test out the ML once again and see if we can make it one full we trip close. without we breaking. Were, we yeah. Close. We almost got there. Was a nut, literally a, a little nut, took us it down. Had to explode. It, yeah, I think it, I think it, it had just to explode. yeah. And I put new control arms on it. It came with new hardware. So anyway, with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this little off-road adventure. If you did, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Share this video with your friends. Subscribe if you haven't already. And most importantly, have a fantastic day. I'll see all of you in the next video. But honestly, one of the most important reasons we're taking this apart to see. But honestly, one of the most important reasons we're taking. Uh, no, this, this is. Uh, this is for the high low. This is for the high low. So I will have to set that up. This is for the high low right here. Stop beeping. Go drive. No more reverse. And then, if you want to be super cool, you can use your boot. Okay. Ugh. Almost fell. Hang on, try that again. Nope, nope, nope. Don't just, don't try to be super cool. Just don't try to be super cool. That's, that's not working at all. <coughs> <coughs> so, <coughs> as you can see, so as you can see, I. <coughs> <coughs> Rear drive shafts tightened up. Let's get our exhaust bracket back. Rear drive shaft is tightened up. <coughs> including there's they're they're amazing and <coughs> hey. <coughs> but when you but it real but it senses how fast you're pre I couldn't imagine lifting. I couldn't imagine putting these kind of I couldn't imagine big thanks to my buddy Jeff and his brand new trail block. Luckily we found a flat Luckily, we found a flat stop. Ah. Get away, plane. <laughs>